Hello, everyone. This is Data Engineer One, and welcome back to another episode of Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. Today, we're going to be talking about transcoding and custom data sets. So what is transcoding? Well, transcoding is a feature that's supported by the Kedro catalog that allows you to save and load some of your data in multiple different ways. So say, for example, you have a CSV file that you want to load using Pandas, or you may want to load using Spark. See, So there's a lot of different ways that we can load as well as save the data that we're trying to look at. Um, the trick here being that you want to make sure that you're still following the proper lineage or the proper ordered set of transformations on that particular piece of data, hence where transcoding comes in. Transcoding will allow you to still keep that piece of data correctly in, this, in the proper order, but allows you also to read it and write it in different kinds of ways. So today we're going to be doing some transcoding as well as writing our own custom data sets. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to, of course, start up our ASCII cinema. And we're not even going to need to use a new Tmux session today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by transcoding our current data set. So currently, we have our iris scatter plot. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a transcoding here just called matplotlib. And transcodings are arbitrary. Um, we're just going to use matplotlib as the transcode here. And I'll just show you what that looks like when we change it inside of our pipelines, data engineering pipeline. So here, all you need to do to support this transcoding is you just add in that transcode matplotlib. And you can run the pipeline. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing a custom data set that will allow us to read the data from the image file that we're outputting as a binary, uh, binary string. And then we're going to be saving that binary string out as base64. Now, one reason you might want to do this, for example, is if you need to transmit data across the network, but you can't send an image, but you can send uh, an, ASCII in, uh, an ASCII string. And so you can see right here, the data set did run. There was no errors with our Kedro pipeline. So of course, um, we should be able to take advantage of this now. So let's go ahead and write our custom data set. So writing a custom data set is actually a fairly trivial process. The only thing that we need to do is we create, oh, we create the folder. Looks like I already created it. And then we can just write our data set here. So we're actually going to first start by writing a byte data set. Now, in order to write these data sets, all you have to do is you first import the abstract data set class from Kedra Core, as well as we're going to import data set error for this case. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to write a read only data set called the byte data set. What this is going to do is it's going to read data in um, from a particular file path and will read and will return a binary string of that data. So the only things that we need to override for this data set is the init function, where we are going to allow it to accept one argument, which is the file path. We're also going to override the save portion, which we will, we will actually raise a data set error because we do not want to use the data in such a way. And we say this is going to be a read only data set. And then we're going to override the load portion. And save actually takes a piece of data. We can actually just put an empty parameter there. Load portion, which will then do the command where we're going to read the file path, making sure that the file path is a string as a binary and returning that binary string. And then finally, this describe method, which then will allow us to describe, or rather like give a description for what this data set is. And so the parameters for this data set, it's just a file path. 
Now, each of these uh, functions has a use. In the init, for example, this is what is going to be called by Kedro when it reads that we're using this data set inside of our data catalog. The save is called when the data set is used in the outputs portion of a node. And the load is called when the data set is used in the inputs portion of a node. And the describe is just a describe. So in this case, for this binary data set, I think we're actually done here. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to do another data set here. And we're going to do not a byte data set, but a base 64 data set. And this will allow us to save the data as base64. For this one, we're, we're going to import our base64 code, b64 encode from Python. We're going to have the same file path. But then for the load, we're actually going to raise an error. We're only going to use this for a write-only data set. And we're going to save by opening the file path and writing to that file path. And what are we writing? We are writing the binary data that is coming in here. And we're base64 encoding that binary data. Of course, we're going to decode that binary data as UTF-8. And that's because b64 encode will return a binary string with the encoded binary data. We're just going to decode it and save that as UTF-8. When we try to load, we're going to raise an error. It's a write-only data set. We're going to be describing the data set as well. Now, we have both our byte data set and our base64 data sets available to us. Let's go ahead and add them to our catalog so we can use them. Now, this is where the power of that transcoding comes in. We have the iris scatter plot in matplotlib form, but now we can also have the scatter plot in byte form. Now, we all, have, all we have to do to use our custom data set is we refer to it in the path, which is introduction kedro.io dot byte data set byte data set and we're actually going to copy the same file path this way we're going to read the the the, the png file as a byte string finally we're going to add this other this other scatter plot base 64 there's no transcoding here we're just going to use the straight up catalog name and we're going to use base64 data set dot base64 data set and the file path here is going to be a new one is going to be iris64 dot txt and so this will be the base encoded the base64 encoded version of this iris.png that's iris scatter plot so now we have our data sets that are written inside of our catalog. Um, we have our data sets that are written inside of our IO. All we need to do is actually add these data sets to our pipeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this screen and we're going to edit the source introduction Kedro uh, pipelines data engineering and then pipeline.py. And inside of here, we're going to add another pipeline with the input being the iris scatterplot matplotlib base I'm sorry the matplotlib encoding and the output to be the base 64 output so the input it's actually not going to be matplotlib, I apologize. The, the input is going to be the bytes encoding, and the output is going to be the base64 encoding. So now the question is, what's going to be 
our node. Well, actually, we're not really doing any kinds of transformations here. This is really just an encoding exercise. We're reading in in the byte form and writing out in the base64 form. So what we can use here is we can just use a simple identity function, the lambda x x. So let's go ahead and write all this stuff in and let's give it a go. Oops, I apologize. My lamp likes to turn off. And here we go. Kedro run. Let's see if we have any errors. run is started and voila let's see if we actually have our data iris 64 text file and here it is the base 64 encoded version of our png now to wrap it up to summarize we wrote two new custom data sets one that reads in the, P the, the png file as a byte string and then one that writes out any kind of byte string as a base64 um, encoded text file. Now what's really great here is that we can actually reuse both of these data sets in whatever form we would like. So if we don't have this PNG, if we have a separate PNG or any kind of other binary data, we can still use these two data sets to read in that binary data and then write it out as a base64 for whatever purpose. Okay, well, that about wraps it up for today's lesson. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you guys learned something. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye.